The cash rate won't rise for three years. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article from Mortgage Business discussing the cash rate and how, well, it's not planning to rise in three years. I'm just bringing up this chart here of the cash rate and you can see I've gone to the effort to update it for that latest cash rate change. That's that little pixel below the straight line there showing that we're... Remember when 3% was considered an emergency rate level. Does everyone remember that? My daughter has, uh, has, in her entire life, has only experienced, she's too young to experience it, but you know what I mean, n interest rate cuts. You know, there'll be a whole generation that through their formative years will probably never see high interest rates on their savings in a bank account. Just think about that, everyone. Those of you that are complaining about rates going up, I, I don't think they can. I think they'll try. They'll try to normalize the cash rate like they did in the US and the market will say, no, bad. You know, How many people, if interest rates shot up 3%, how many people would be in underwater? We already have so many people at mortgage stress and they need to keep the bubble going, guys. They need to keep the property bubble going. It's all we got in Australia. We don't have much. Don't worry about tourism, Florian. Don't worry about exports. Don't worry about international student education. Don't worry about the fact that we're businesses are trading while insolvent and propped up by JobKeeper. We'll just build more houses. <laughs> oh, a funny story, actually. I was walking up the street and I bumped into a gentleman, just a, an old guy. Uh, you know, we were walking. We went to 7-Eleven. You know, I got the push trolley. I got my coffee. And uh, the kids had their Slurpees. And I was, uh, to, uh, an old gentleman was at his house. And I just had to set a low. And I was asking about the cladding he had on there. And he actually knew my house because it's one of the oldest ones here. That's why we got it so cheap because it's fallen apart. And he, he lived in my street and he showed all, you know, shared all these stories. So it really is quite a small <laughs> world. It really is. And he was just saying, all the changes that have happened around here like that main road was just the dirt track or you know they stuffed up the he had to move because they stuffed up the flood mitigation and flooded him out you know and he had to fight with the bureaucrats to get money back and just how much development has gone on all around this area how many houses have gone up and now we're getting another wave through here where apartments are going up everywhere which makes a lot of sense on the bigger roads you know you want to get up that density but still, it's, it's nuts what they're asking for these things. Anyway, so the cash rate isn't going to rise in three years' time. So what's that going to do? It's going to have more people will borrow more. It means it's going to put upward pressure on the housing market. You know, how many of you there, you know, have you secured your loan? Have you got a fixed mortgage now because of this rate cut? Are they going to cut it anymore? Do you think we're going to go to negative? Remember, they said no. But that, that we've learned already, that's going to be irrelevant. So let's have a look at this. The governor of the Reserve Bank of Australia has revealed that the cash rate is not expected to increase until 2023 at the earliest. RBA Governor Philip Lowe has revealed that the central bank does not expect to increase the official cash rate for at least three years, or at least until there is a lower rate of unemployment and a return to a tight labor market. Are we gonna that's that could be years away guys that really could speak what if what if we've hit three years and we don't have a return to lower rates of unemployment speaking after delivering the november cash rate decision in which the board of the reserve bank of australia decided to reduce the cash rate to a record low of 0.1 percent governor low outlined the rationale for the move to cut the rate and move to a broader quantitative easing program the moves announced by the RBA on Tuesday entailed a reduction of in the cash rate target, the three-year yield target and the interest rate on new drawings under the term funding facility to 10 basis points, down from 25 basis points. A reduction in the interest rate on exchange settlement balances to zero, down from 10 basis points and the introduction of a program of government bond purchases, including the purchase of 100 billion of government bonds over the next six months, purchasing bonds issued by the Australian government, as well as the states and territories. According to Mr. Lowe, its actions are lowering the cost of government finance and lowering the cost of finance for all other borrowers in Australia, whether they are households 
whether they are a household buying a home or a business wanting to expand. What business would want to expand right now with the first recession in 28 years? Businesses are going to contract. Let me know, guys, if you're in business, are you planning to expand? And let us know in the comments what business it is, because I'd be interested. Because some people are doing well at the moment. Some businesses are picking up and getting busier. I, I think in some ways the housing sector is going to be a little bit overheated for the next three months, for at least for the first quarter of next year. But that's also when the trading while insolvent hits. So I'm worried about what disruptions that's going to have moving forward. So while revealing the thinking behind the move, Mr. Lowe also outlined that he did not expect the cash rate to rise until 2023 at the earliest. Noting the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the Australian economy, which entered a recession for the first time in nearly 30 years earlier this year, Mr. Lowe acknowledged that the recession had not been as bad as was earlier expected or experienced in many other countries. Indeed, he revealed that the central bank would be realizing a revived economic sorry would be releasing a revised economic outlook on friday november 6th which will contain an upgrade to the near-term economic outlook however he outlined that while the upgrade to the near-term outlook was clearly welcome news he added that the pandemic had influenced significant sorry had inflicted significant damage to our economy and it has become increasingly apparent that there will be last long-lasting effects including high unemployment well, see, this is the thing. It's not the pandemic. It hasn't done it. It is the interventions into the economy to restrict the spread of the pandemic. That is what's done the damage. We just need to be clear about that, everyone. It seems to be forgotten. This is the price we're paying. This economic damage is the price that we're paying for the decisions made by our leaders. Now, if it's right or wrong, that's for the history books to decide. I lean more towards the advice of, well, eminent epidemiologists, who eradicated, well, among some things, you know, polio, and who argued against mandatory lockdowns because of the greater economic damage. I've got a video on it, D.A. Henderson. Have a look at it, guys. It's interesting to see that perspective from professionals in that field. And it, 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 it makes me wonder why that advice wasn't considered. But we won't know. We're now suffering the consequences, everyone. So Mr. Lowe said, it will take time to repair that damage and it is highly likely that the recovery will be uneven and drawn out. Yeah, we're, we're entering a K, we've got a K-shaped economy. It's going to exacerbate the difference between the haves and the have-nots, particularly the, those in property and those out. That, that's the sad reality of it. I watched a, a good documentary, um, I'll link to it, from a, a, a gentleman, an investor and a lecturer. He did a, a little video about or a, little, little, a long video about Ponzi and his life. And it was fascinating. Fascinating. You should watch it. So in particular, we face the prospect of a long period of higher unemployment and underemployment and we have that than we have become used to. The RBAs, in the RBA central scenario, job creation is slow over coming months and the unemployment rate is still around 6% at the end of 2022. One consequence of this is that wages, growth and inflation are both likely to stay very low. In each of the next two years, we're expecting annual wages growth of less than 2%. And inflation in underlying terms is expected to be just 1% next year and 1.5% in 2022. Given this outlook, the board judged that it is appropriate to take further steps to support the economy. Unemployment is a major economic and social problem that damages the fabric of our society. So it is important that it is addressed. The board recognized that in the context of the pandemic, the responsibility for job creation falls mainly on the shoulders of business and government, but the Reserve Bank can and will make a contribution too. This policy package does that, and it builds on the contributions from our policy measures early in the year, he said. So lowering the whole structure of interest rates in Australia. Together, these three elements represent a significant package. The lower interest rates our plan to buy $100 billion of government bonds over the next six months will help people get jobs and support the recovery of the Australian economy, Mr. Lowe continued. So that's what they're hoping will happen. And we'll have to see, everyone. We'll have to keep an eye out on the economy to see if that actually materialises. The package combines the price-based target 
at the shorter period of the yield curve that has been in place since March with a quantitative target at the longer part of the yield curve. In doing so, it will lower the whole structure of interest rates in Australia. This lower structure of interest rates will work to support the economy through the normal transition uh, mechanisms, including lower borrowing costs, a lower exchange rate, and otherwise, otherwise than otherwise and higher asset prices. To be clear, the inflation target remains the cornerstone of Australia's monetary framework. Even so, the priority over the next couple of years is jobs, with inflation risks remaining low. The RBA has a broad legislative mandate for price stability, full employment, and the economic welfare of the Australian people. This month's decision reflects that broad mandate. The Reserve Bank, the RBA governor, said the board expects this new lower level of interest rates will be in place for an extended period of time. He commented the board will not increase the cash rate until actual inflation is sustainable within the target range. Well, they don't seem to be doing well to that. <laughs> Are we going to ever see it? It is not enough for inflation to be forecast to be in the target range. For, infl for inflation to be sustainable within the target range, wage growth will have to be materially higher than it is currently. This will require a lower rate of unemployment and a return to a tight labour market. He concluded, On the current outlook, it will take some years to get there. Given this, the board is not expecting to increase the cash rate for at least three years. It remains the case that prior to any increase in the cash rate target, the board intends to remove the three-year yield target, Mr. Lowe said. So there's little to be gained from negative interest rates. Remember, we're in emergency rates. 3% was the emergency cut, everyone, to 3%. Look at us now. So when little be gained from negative rates, they may get desperate. It may be all they have. The RBA concluded, in terms of interest rates, I think we've gone as far as it makes sense to do so in the current environment. There's been no change to the board's view, and there is little to be gained from lowering the policy rate into negative territory. While a negative rate might lead to a helpful depreciation of the Australian dollar, it could impair the supply of credit to the economy and lead some people to save more rather than spend more. Given this assessment, the board continues to view a negative policy rate in Australia as extraordinarily unlikely. But monetary policy is now more than just short-term interest rates. We've returned to a world in which quantities matter too. It is a world, it is certainly possible for us to increase the size of our bond purchases. There it is. Potential for infinite QE, guys. We're jumping on the same bandwagon as the Fed in America. Mr. Lowe said, given this, we will continue to closely monitor the economic situation and the impact our purchases on market our purchases have on market functioning. If we need to do more, we can and we will. And this is written by Annie Kane, editor of the advisor and mortgage business. So there we have it, everyone. More evidence or more arguments that the cash rate isn't going to increase for three years. And well, we're in a quantitative easing world here in Australia. What do you think? I think this will encourage more people to jump into property, more people to borrow more than they might necessarily have. And it will have a increase in the property bubble, or at least help prop it up for a little bit longer. As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.